All Bladebridge configurations are funded by partners on behalf of end user projects and are not an endorsement by Bladebridge or its team members. Hello and welcome to the presentation of Bladebridge Converter. In today's session, I'll demo how to convert Oracle store procedures into Snowflake JavaScript store procedures. I'm going to use the UI to do the conversion. Alternatively, we have a command line utility, uh, the converter that can be executed from Linux or Windows command line prompt. I'm going to go into one of the demo repositories. Uh, it's multi-user, multi-project environment, and uh, I, can, I can host multiple projects in here and, and multiple project participants can work on this. I will open up this demo project. So this project uh, has already been set up. Uh, there's project name, project code available, short description. In the conversion setup uh, tab, I can specify my source and target technologies. So if we're, if we're converting from Oracle to Snowflake or any other SQL platforms, uh, we're going to be using generic SQL to SQL converter with config files, and this is what we need to specify as our source and target technologies. In the configurations tab, I can provide the name of the config file, so this is critical for the converter. All of our converters have the config files externalized so the user can adjust the configuration patterns or inherit from the patterns that uh, Bladebridge provides out of the box. And the reason for that is that every client environment typically has something that's uh, specific to them, and we want to give the user the ability to convert the code to the fullest as opposed to just uh, work uh, in a black box um, manner and just convert the patterns that have been configured in, in the converter up, up to date. So you can always expand the patterns, um, adjust the built-in patterns that we provide or just inherit from our config file. Uh, in a few minutes after I do the conversion, I will go into the config file and explain how the config files are organized. So once I have this information set up, I can go into the conversion tab and click on the search button. Uh, at this point, the, the converter UI will have all the uh, all the scripts inventorized, so I can I can use the search panel to, to search by status, by script categories, um, by custom tags that I may choose to assign by complexity level or file name. Uh, the UI also will allow you to test the converted script, so once you start doing the testing, you can also search by error codes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up one of the scripts here. So this is what it looks like. This is an Oracle store procedure, and this particular example has conditional statements. Uh, just to view this file, I'm going to open up the editor, and this is the file that um, I'm showing. So th this part particular store procedure has a cursor block. Um, it has mu multiple DML statements, such as an update statement. It uses Oracle-specific functions, such as mouse between and trunk. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the converter. So I'm going to go back to my screen here and um, convert this code into uh, Snowflake's JavaScript store procedure. So I can click on Convert Script. Okay, and this is the resulting JavaScript store procedure. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and open it in an editor. So I can right-click here and click on Open Converted File in Editor. Other operations that you can perform is opening up both files in editor, or if you're converting to another SQL dialect as opposed to SQL wrapped in JavaScript, sometimes it's convenient to do a diff on files and look at the differences. So for now, I'll just open up the converted file in the editor, and this is what we have converted so far. Um, so the store procedure signature changes 
to the corresponding JavaScript Snowflake dialect, my DML statement, the update statement, got converted to the equivalent uh, Snowflake statement wrapped in JavaScript uh, function call. Now, note that the months between and trunk uh, function calls got converted to date diff and date trunk. Uh, what the converter also uh, did, it, uh, not only it converted the names of the functions, but also it, it altered the signature of the functions. So it, it changed the positions of the arguments, plus it added uh, default arguments such as months to, to date div call and uh, the date argument to date uh, trunk call. And all that information is specified in, in config files. So in case there are functions that perhaps are not mapped or maybe they're new in, in Oracle, uh, or perhaps you want to apply a certain pattern of converting uh, specific functions to out of patterns, you can always adjust the config file so you are, as the user of the converter, in total control of, of what the output patterns will be. Now, the converter um, converted the cursor. So my cursor one got converted to, to this implementation, a while loop. And the conditional statements following the loop got converted as well to JavaScript format. So uh, the converter converted pretty much everything and it added the uh, the catch block in order to handle errors appropriately. So the convert the way the converter converts the error handling block or, or generates the error handling block is that it will report the step at which pr procedure fails with the uh, Snowflake error message. Um, so you'll have all the information needed to trace the error. You can also customize this block so it doesn't have to be the way it's provided out of the box. Now going back to the converter UI, besides doing the conversions, you can also have the converter test the script. So that test is for compilation only. It's not for uh, doing uh, parallel data reconciliation activities. There's another BladeBridge utility that, that does that actually. But this test is really just to compile the, the code and make sure that syntactically the code is correct. Now, besides uh, converting one script at a time, you can tell the converter to convert and test in bulk. So I can select all the scripts or I can use search criteria to narrow down my searches to, to certain conditions and then do bulk conversion or bulk testing. So in my action panel at the bottom, I can specify what action I'd like to apply. So I can click on, on the Go button, and the converter will apply uh, conversions to all the uh, selected scripts. OK, so now all the scripts are in the status of converted, and I can open them up and see um, how they look. Now, if I go back to my editor, I can open up the remaining files. So my cursor and loop example got converted to this. So again, another implementation of while loop just to implement the for loop in the original Oracle procedure. And this is the last store procedure that I converted. It has a loop based on a select statement. And this is what the converter generated. So all the logic has been uh, transformed from Oracle to Snowflake JavaScript procedures. Now, how does the converter work? Uh, the converter is not a black box uh, utility. Through configuration files, as I mentioned earlier, you can define what the output patterns will be. So really briefly, my entry level um, J JSON config file is this. Uh, we allow for inheritance, so this particular file inherits from the base Oracle Snowflake translations. But the reason why I have this file called Oracle Snowflake underscore JavaScript prox is, is because this layer of configurations deals specifically 
with uh, JavaScript orchestration. So I'm not going to go into details on how exactly it, uh, the, the, um, this configuration worked at this level. Uh, it's more of a, an advanced topic, by, but basically you can tell the converter how, how you want to handle different fragments of code, whether it's uh, store procedure declaration or uh, read, read DML, write DML, start of if statement, else if um, code block, end of if statement, return statements, etc. And you can you can define your own handlers of these blocks, or you can use the ones that we provide. But where I want to concentrate a little more is on pure Oracle to Snowflake SQL translations. So our main config file inherits from that uh, file, and this is that file that deals with, uh, with, with the actual SQL translations. Within this file, and this is the file that, that is most frequently touched, or perhaps you might want to inherit from this file and, and create a custom specific or project specific config file, and you can mani manipulate sections of config files such as line substitutions. So this would be very simple regex substitutions. You can apply those substitutions for particular statement categories. So for example, I can say that this particular string will get converted to this string, but only for statement category table DDL. Or I can include some other categories, or perhaps I want to exclude some of the categories. And there is another config file, base config file, which this file is inheriting from where our config sections are defined or category, uh, category definitions uh, are available. Now, besides doing line level substitutions, you can also apply block level substitutions. Sometimes they are more useful than line level substitutions, uh, especially when your replacements need to spend across multiple lines of code. And lastly, function substitutions. In this section, we specify how functions should be translated. So for example, I can tell the converter that whenever it encounters uh, the function months between, to convert it to date diff. And this is the subsection that I can use to tell the converter what I want to do with argument placement. So I can tell the converter that either third argument or the literal months will go into the first position. The second argument will stay in its place. And the first argument will go into the third position. Similarly, I can specify um, how to translate the truncate function to date trunk and provide the argument placement specifications for that. The function calls can be nested. The converter can handle nested function calls without any issues. So for example, in my first script that I that I demoed, we substituted a months between call uh, that wraps around date um, date trunk or, or trunk function call, and this is what the converter produced. So just to recap, um, I just demoed BladeBridge SQL converter specifically for Oracle to Snowflake JavaScript combination. The way the converter works, uh, it can be executed from command line or from the UI. And the patterns that it executes on the, the resulting code can be controlled by the user using the configuration files, either the ones that we provide out of the box, or users can expand uh, and inherit from our um, configuration files or, or completely replace them just to get the patterns that they need. Thank you for listening in.